Hi everyone, this is GKCS. Uh, we are talking about a very famous algorithm called Digitstra's algorithm, which is to find the shortest path in a graph from a source node. And the reason I'm talking about this is because it's a part of the series of dynamic programming on graphs. But more than anything, when I was studying this in uh, the algorithms class, I came across this. I saw that it's a pretty simple algorithm uh, in terms of the lines of code and also understanding what's happening. But the really complicated part was the proof of this. Why does it even work? So, because I didn't understand the proof, uh, I, I was always scared of graphs after this. And whether it was minimum spanning tree or whatever that came next, digit trust was the, was the foundation on which I should have probably worked harder. But we'll get to the proof now to remove all our fears now. Okay, so the algorithm goes like this. You have a source node. And you want to find all the shortest paths to all the destination nodes. So this is node 1, node 2, node 3, node 4, and node 5. So from node 0, you want to find the shortest paths to all other destinations, all possible destinations. OK, so how do we do that? First, let's talk about the algorithm, then we'll talk about the proof. One thing that you can do is go for the smallest distance from your source. Okay, the smallest distance to a city is 1 in our case. So from 0 to 1, distance from 0 to 1 is just 1. Now, picking this up is pretty logical because if you're going to any other city and you're trying to shorten the path, if you're trying to tighten that string, so to speak, then what you need to do is find an intermediate city. And the most logical intermediate city in our case is going to be the one which is closest to us. Because after all, what's an intermediate city? It's something from the source the intermediate is i plus from the intermediate to the destination let's call that v okay this is the distance and we are trying to make this less than the distance we already have so from source to v this should be the case so for the very first city you cannot find an intermediate which is smaller because distance to that let's say first city is the smallest. So this is a positive quantity, of course. And this distance is definitely greater than this distance, because that is the definition of the smallest city from the source. So that makes sense. You go to the very first city, which is closest to you over here. right? And now what you do is you try to tighten all the paths from this city to every other city it touches. So one touches two. Okay, there's an there's a edge from 1 to 2. And you're going to try to shorten that distance from the source. And now using this city, we try to find if there are shorter paths to its neighbors than we have already found. So from 0 to 2, there's a path of length 6. But if you take 1, then you can go to 1 in just 1 unit distance. So that is distance from 0 to 1 plus distance from 0 or rather from 1 to 2. That's what we're competing against, right? So 0 to 2. These are the two quantities you're competing against. Uh, this comes out to be, like we said, 6. This is 1 plus this is 1 to 2. So that is 4. So 6, 5, you choose the minimum because you want the shortest path. So what ends up happening is this path is deleted and you get a path length of 5. So you see that there are updates in this. In fact, we can now remove this path from 1 to 2. All this won't happen, of course, but logically, it's like removing the path up to 2 and updating it. OK, uh, what else? Well, can we use any other cities? No, because in our set, we just have 1. OK, we are sure that 1 has the shortest path from 0. No other city was sure yet. After this is done, 2 is added to our set. So now we know for certain that going to 2 is as efficient as possible. That's what the algorithm guarantees. So now we have two cities in our set, visited set, which is 1 and 2. And the next city we should visit is the one closest to the source and which already hasn't been visited, of course. So that is between 12 and 10, we choose this way 10 to go to city 5. 
So five should be added to our set, but first we look at five and we try to find any edges from five. So none exist, no problem, we add it to the visited city set. Now what? This city needs to be visited, so I'll just name it something six and this should be seven then. Right. So this is the very next city from city number zero, which has the shortest distance. So that is 12. Are there any cities from six, which have edges two six? So of course there are, there's four, there's seven, and there's three, all three cities can be visited. So from six, zero to four doesn't have any edge. No, so technically that was infinity. 0 to 3 didn't have an edge either, so that was also infinity, and 0 to 7 also didn't have an edge, so that was infinity. So from 6, we are going to be updating the distances. 0 to 4 is going to have the distance 24. Okay, because there was a 12 here, so 12 plus 12 became 24, and this edge technically got removed. Now, 0 to 3 didn't have an edge either. That's going to be updated to the value 12 plus 18, which is 30. Let's remove this edge. Let's give this a weight of 30. That makes sense because you're never going to be using this edge to come here because from zero, you can directly take a virtual edge of 30. Now what? Seven. Seven goes to 12 plus five instead of infinity and it gets a value of 17. Okay, so we have updated some edges. The next city is chosen between edge weights of 30, 17, and 24. So, what's the smallest edge here? Of course, 17. That gives us node 7. Node 7 is to be added. Let's add that initially and let's have a look. So, from 7, are there any outgoing edges? Yes, there's 5. So, 17 plus 5 for city 4 completes with 24 and that gives you 22 versus 24. We get rid of this edge and mark it as 22. Okay, nice. Does 7 have any more outgoing edges? No, it doesn't. So 7 has been added to the set. What's the smallest edge now? Which hasn't been added? 22 versus 30. We have to choose 22 then. So 22 plus 6 for 3 versus 30, that's 28, get rid of this edge too, no, sorry, that is 22 even now, get rid of this edge, and this becomes 28. So logically you see what's happening, it's like a world out there from a single source. You go to the nearest city which you have not explored, and you see if you're getting some better deals, once that city has been completely explored, you go to the very next city, which hasn't been explored, and so on and so forth. What's happening is that the world is contracting around you, and at the end of the day, you should have really short paths, the shortest possible paths to all destinations. Okay, so this is the algorithm. Let's write down some code for it to understand how it really works. So the algorithm for this is quite simple. We have the lengths given to us, so the length from any point to another point. If it doesn't exist, then uh, it's infinity. And we also have the source given to us. So what we do is we take an array of distance. Now this distance is always from the source. So any point to the source, that's the distance being given by this array d. And initially we are filling them all with infinity of size n, the array size is n. Okay, and from source to source, we set that to zero because that doesn't have any distance. Uh, then we have a visited set. What happens is if this visited set is equal to n, means that we have visited all the cities, we have tightened all the strings that we could, no more tightening, so we should stop the procedure there. Inside this loop, we should look at the cities we have not visited, and among them we should choose that city which has the minimum distance. All right, so that will give you u, you add that to the set of visited cities. So it's as good as you have visited that city now because you have found the best path for it. And what you're going to do now is tighten uh, all the adjacent cities to that, if it's possible. So you take 
all vertices which are adjacent to u. Let's call that v. And if the distance to v at this given point of time is actually greater than using u as an intermediate, then please use u as an intermediate. That's all. So let's try to find out the time complexity. This is order n, but that's a one-time thing, so that's fine. Uh, the number of cities has to be less than n, visited cities. So for the first time, unvisited cities where n minus 1 in number. Second time, there'll be n minus 2, and so on and so forth, because we'll be visiting more cities. Over here is another quantity, so that should be added. What's that? Uh, all cities which are adjacent to u. So that should be, in the worst case, in a complete graph, that will be n cities. All cities are adjacent to u. Happens for a second time also. Goes on happening till we have just one unvisited city. So that gives you n into n plus, well, uh, this is what i, but i goes from 1 to n minus 1. So the order complexity of this should be, even if I take n here, right, that's still n into n plus n, which is 2n squared, which is order n squared. So Dijkstra's runs in order n squared time if you have n nodes, n vertices. And now, you know, you know the algorithm, you know the efficiency of this algorithm. In fact, there's another version which gives you order e log v running time. So v is nothing but n. And if the number of edges in this graph are really low, then it's useful. Otherwise, in the worst case, number of edges are n squared themselves. So in fact, this, gra this algorithm is worse than the algorithm we just learned. But if you have few edges, then you should use this one because it gives you e log n as the time complexity. Okay. Now, of course, we know the algorithm, we know the time complexity, but what's the proof? So let's try to understand how this algorithm works and why it works.